All right, we're in San Diego with Danny Spiegel, and how appropriate. How appropriate. We're getting some food in. I think we have to start talking about, a, a lot of people actually, it takes 10 minutes to work around, so they ask the question of what is this all about? But you're pretty forthright, and the girls who eat stuff that you do, like, it's so catchy, it's so cool. Tell me about how that started and the vision with that. Honestly, it started off as just like a fun joke between friends that we were girls who eat, because we, like me and a friend, like we went to Chipotle like twice in one day and we started like making the joke of like, oh, we're like girls who eat. And I started like really thinking about it and I was like, well, one, it's catchy. Two, I was like, I think it's really important that a lot of females understand that it's okay to eat. And I think for so long, the stigma and the stereotypes of women needing to be small or you know, the, the women that we saw in media, social media, fashion, runway, movies, everyone was trying to gain this like petite figure and the importance of body positivity and how you get to body positivity is something that I really strive for. So now women are kind of getting into their own. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to love my body. I'm going to take care of my body. I want to be strong. And I think a lot of girls miss the whole thing of like, well, if you want that, you have to eat. You can't just live off of you know, salads and no bread or like nothing yeah. and be at a calorie deficit, but also want to be strong. So I'm trying to like push that narrative that you actually have to like care for your body. And if you want to lift heavy stuff, you got to, you know, fuel your body properly. Yeah. But that's very, very like in your face, like the girls who eat stuff. But if you like really dig into it is women just deserve like not just a seat at the table, they deserve to own the table. So I want girls to just be out there eating life. And I don't oh, want right, that. Okay. And I think women especially like we've had a lot of problems with like body positivity body image and the self-consciousness and it just plagues women and i think to a point where they're intimidated to do things in their life because of their body image and like the way that they view themselves they may not be as confident to ask for a promotion or go after like what they want start their own business because they're just worried like they're so plagued from like what their body looks like and so i want to just erase all that, it's not going to be an overnight thing. It's going to be a long, so it, again, there's like the in your face message, but then there's like the bigger, broader message of like, it's just time for women to stop caring about like what their body looks like, but more like what their bodies can do. Yeah. And more importantly, what their, their minds can do. Yeah. But we can't like really unleash like what our minds can do. if we're still plagued about like some cellulite on our legs. So obviously you one of the best crossfitters in the world. You've been in this space for quite a long time. Do you see girls under eating in CrossFit? Yeah. Like all this, intentionally? Yes, intentionally. And then you, oh. well, I think you see it. And then, I mean, we, it's no surprise is like, I'm not, I'm not gonna like sit here and say names. But we've had some athletes like take a step back because they've had such issues with body image and like their eating and stuff. Wow. And it's something where we're striving for like, you know, this strength aspect, but leanness aspect and performance aspect, but we're also like all over the internet all the time. So like, we want to look good. We want to like feel confident about our bodies. And so there's a lot of pressure. Mm. And when there's women, you know, trying to maintain like a certain body image, we're going to get a lot of hate. Yeah. And there are, are people out there who I know probably would prioritize like aesthetics over performance. And sometimes aesthetics is like, they may not be under eating if you like, put that diet on like a regular person, but for the amount of training that some of us do, mm -hmm. they're under eating. Yeah. And it's different if you're just cutting and you're like purposely trying to like gain, like lose some weight, like lose some excess like body fat. And then like, you know, being in a depletion where you're just like, it's unhealthy. How and often I, does the triad happen to female athletes in CrossFit? You know, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Like, I yeah. think it's like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like a taboo topic. Yeah. And because we're supposed to be these like pinnacle of health. And so I don't think it's something that is really like talked about enough. But I would say more like it happens more often than I think we'd care to admit. It's funny. People always talk about they, they think that like, if you're in your peak physical condition from a performance standpoint, that you also feel incredible. You know, no, no, not even close. Usually you feel like shit. Uh -huh. If we're going to just be honest about it, like no one is going in, like for example, like the CrossFit Games or in like your thing, your space. You don't ever go into like the biggest competition feeling 100% healthy. No. You're usually wrecked. Mm -hmm. You're depleted. Your body is like in survival mode almost. Uh -huh. And you can somehow push out the last couple of days and like come out on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then you just 
die. <laughs> so when, when you look at 10 girls walk out onto the competition floor, say Rogue was my first experience seeing all of you guys. Yeah. You stand out like that. <laughs> Has it always been that way? Yeah, I've always been like super muscular. So that's where a lot of my internal trauma and self issue, like self conscious issues came from. You know, as a kid, like I was a gymnast, and so I always had more muscle than everyone girls, boys, yeah, even right. like the okay. male, the male teachers I could like beat up if they like, you know, <laughs> like sure. don't push me. <laughs> sure. Um, but it became one of those things where, you know, as kids, they don't understand like the things that they say, like the impact they have. So growing up and always hearing the words like big and large and heavy yeah. and huge. You know, those words all of a sudden start having like a deeper meaning than just like, wow, your legs are huge. And like now I take it as like a compliment. I'm like, yes, they are. Like yeah. maybe if you squat heavy, you could have big legs too. <laughs> but you know, as a kid, it was like one of those things where you immediately see it as a negative connotation. You're immediately like, oh, I'm, I'm too big. Like I'm too large. Like I'm bigger than the boys. Like boys aren't <laughs> gonna like me because I'm bigger and stronger than them. I'm now I'm like, you're doing something wrong if I'm bigger and stronger than you. So like, <laughs> but you know, as a kid, it was always like that. I was always muscular. I always yeah. had big legs. I, you know, genetically, I just, I'm, I'm a bigger person. Yeah. And so always, like it always kind of like was at first my nightmare. And now it's like the dream yeah. Hope to strive for it. We're, we're not dissimilar. When I was 16, I went into the gym and from 16 to like, really when I started strongman, my whole goal was that I want to be smaller. Like body image, I'm just like, I'm too big, I'm too fat. I did a bodybuilding show, stepped on stage, like in good shape. And I, even on stage, I'm like, I'm too fat. Like, it's just not the thing. Tell me about the process that you had to go through where like big went from bad to good. I, you know, grew up again, hearing those words was already kind of like a little self-conscious about my body. In college, I went through a really bad relationship that was both like physically and mentally abusive. And that person really like put me into like a really dark space in my life. And after I finally like escaped that, like I found CrossFit. And that's where like the body positivity first started where I was like, wow, like, you know, my first day I went into CrossFit, like I power clean 185. Like really? I just like picked up a bar and I was like, oh, is that good? And people were like, what the f <laughs> <laughs> Like right. mad. They were like, I've been, I've been working my whole life in here. But so you, you trained before that though, obviously. I mean, I did, I did like other stuff. Like I grew up doing gymnastics. I actually rode my freshman year of college, um, but they wanted me to get up early in the morning. So I was like, no. Oh, row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, we're gonna be in the water at 4 a.m. And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> like, so I gave them one year of my life and had to like respectfully walk away. Uh, I did volleyball. Like I just did, you know, I bounced around until I like found something that gave, cause I used to, I loved gymnastics growing up. The, challenge of it both mentally and physically i love spending you know eight hours a day like training and so i was waiting till i found that love and i just kind of bounced around until i found it again and i found crossfit yeah and that's where like the body positivity thing started happening again i was like okay well my body can do these things like without ever doing crossfit that these people can't do so like this is something that i'm gonna like really dig into so i started like going and going and then getting heavily into competing, I was like, okay, well, all these other women look different than me. I'm strong, but I need to lean out. And so I took it seriously for like months. Like I was very, very dedicated to counting macros. And I was very antisocial because if you're like really trying to lean and trying to cut, you're not going out and hanging out with your friends. You're not going out to restaurants. You're not doing anything. You're essentially, you know, like waking up, eating, training, eating, training, eating, training, eating, sleep. And that was my life. And, you know, for a while I thought that that was like bringing me happiness and I leaned down, like I was very lean. Like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like I realized I was like, someone asked me, they were like, so what do you do for fun? Like outside of CrossFit? Yeah. And I couldn't give an answer because I was like, what have I done? Not CrossFit related because, you know, at the time in 2019, the sanctionals were going on. I was traveling a lot. And I was like, you know, I like to travel. And they're like, when's the last time you traveled not for CrossFit? And I was so stumped from those two questions of like, what do you do outside of CrossFit? And when have you traveled not for CrossFit? I was sitting there and I was like, what have I done? Uh -huh. I was like, I love CrossFit, but like it's become everything. And now I have nothing outside of it. Yeah. And that's when it took a turn. And I was like, I need to be happy with my life and I need to not dictate 
everything to do this sport that in reality could be gone in an instant. You know, you get injured and it's just over. Would you accept the outcome that you are where you are now with what you've done? Would you accept that if you sacrifice those things for a long time, winning the CrossFit Games, would you still say you prefer to operate how you operate now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So it's one of those things where I understand that it's always like a tricky thing to talk about because there are people who are giving their all to go and stand on top of that podium at the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. And it, there was a point where like, that's where I wanted. That was my only goal is yeah. to go and win the CrossFit Games. But it shifted when I realized that one, you know, this sport, it, like maybe like you yourself, you'll wake up and you'll feel great. You say like you're a CrossFit champion, but you wake up the next day and not much has changed. And you went through all of that and not much has changed. It's not like, I'm just gonna you say it. It's not like other sports, you know, football, basketball, where you have this huge thing and all of a sudden like, you're getting like deals and you're getting like all this kind of stuff. Like CrossFit is very low impact when it comes to, you know, financial futures and also just like it changing your livelihood. And it became like one of those things where I needed to do things that were gonna bring me happiness outside of the sport. Yeah. And it's just, you know, we, yeah. we talked about it a little bit is like at the end of the day, you, know, you wake up the next morning and not much has changed. You probably feel super proud, but I also feel super proud about like everything else that I'm doing. So I, I there was a shift where I realized that I was gonna get the same satisfaction. Uh -huh. And so it just, it again, there are people who are gonna say, no, they wanna win the CrossFit Games and I respect it. Uh -huh. But for me, like, I don't wanna have to live my life with the amount of discipline you have to have to go win the CrossFit Games anymore. And there was a point yeah. that I did, yeah. but it, it shifted. Yeah, it's funny because I've gotten blowback from operating much the same way and even, Having the experience of winning and winning World's Strongest Man, like one day later, it's the same, same house, same people around you with a trophy and an opportunity to do something. And that's all that all of this really seems to be working towards. Now, I know myself have gotten blowback for not saying that like Strongman is my entire life. And I've heard personally people say, like, oh, Danny, like, it's not full in the CrossFit. She just. She's in it for uh, like selling her body and she's more worried about her image. And she's, how do you deal with that type of blowback from the community that you love that has given you so much? It's kind of just funny. It's like one of those things where it's like people can say all that they want, but at the end of the day, I, I live a life that I enjoy. And if I can use CrossFit as like a stepping stone into like bigger and better things, I can just reverse the question to a lot of those people. They say, oh, I'm not all in a CrossFit and I'm like using this to, you know, build a brand, build an image and like do stuff outside of the space. I can just turn around and be like, what do you have outside of CrossFit? Yeah. What are you going to do if you break your leg tomorrow? Do you have a brand to fall back on? Yeah. Or do you have a college degree to yeah. fall back on? Yeah. Do you have anything to fall back on? Or are you going to have to go and work at a Starbucks. Yeah. Like, it's just like one of those things, if you want to throw stones my way, like we can throw them right back. And there are people who have set themselves up to do things, but it's all based around CrossFit. I don't see any CrossFitter doing something that does not center around CrossFit. And it's, that is their whole life. And so you can, like, people can say whatever they want about me and I'm still a great athlete. I'm still like competing, but I'm also doing like other things that are just so much more important than like what CrossFit is. like. I'll admit it, if CrossFit all of a sudden started saying like, if you make top 10, we'll give you like $5 million, $10 million deals, you bet your <laughs> ass my life would, ch I would start prioritizing things a little bit differently. Sure. But right now, like, you know, there's such a big drop off. Unless you win the CrossFit games, you're really not even making a good year's salary from your prize, like from your prize money. CrossFit doesn't pay me monthly stipends to do CrossFit. It's the brand that I've built that like really builds and like, creates my life and all these people are still going to be in my life whether I like am in CrossFit or quit CrossFit so all the people that want to throw stones like go ahead quit CrossFit where are you going to be yeah <laughs> so we met at Waterpalooza mm -hmm. and it was that was my first experience to CrossFit a really stuff. good first experience yeah, so cool <laughs> yeah. so cool I'm like man we're doing it wrong um but it was interesting because I talked to you and I said, 
the women are more popular than the men in CrossFit. Why do you think that is? And it's partially because I'm like, I want to hear it out of someone else's mouth who's part of it. And I just don't want to make the assumption. And you're literally like, we're hot girls exercising in very little clothing. I'm like, Sex sells. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So how do you, you've sort of embraced that as much as anyone. Why have you chosen to embrace that rather than a lot of your cohort who would prefer not to be seen that way, who would prefer to be seen as athletes first? Why can't you be seen as both? Like, why can't you, like, that's where I, like, that's where I'm coming from is so many people are like, you either are going to be a serious athlete or you're going to be like an attractive woman. Why can we not be both? Why is it that women have to be one or the other? Why is it like you're a good athlete or you're like a sex icon? Like, why can't, like, why can't we do both? It's the same kind of thing with the whole stereotypes about women. Like, you can't be smart and, you know, pretty. You can't be a good mom and have a successful career. Like, fuck all of that. Like, we can be both. Women can do amazing things with their body and be incredible athletes. And respectfully, people can be like, and she's also a fucking stud. She's, like, really hot. You can have both. But the problem is are the gross fucking men that are on the internet and they like over-sexualize the body. You can appreciate the female form, the female figure and be like, yeah, she's got a great body. She's really like attractive. But it's when they take that step to like start saying like the gross, grotesque things. And that's where it becomes like this whole different shift. Now, if everyone was respectful, it wouldn't be a problem. It's like when the people, and it's, and it's also, so it's, it's the gross men and it's the jealous women. The women who like wish that they could like show off their bodies or maybe self-conscious with their own bodies and they just want to tear other women down. What's, and it's like, can we just like, can, like throw that the fuck away? Which side of that has been worse for you? It's, women or it's men? It's men. Men? <laughs> it's always. So, <laughs> but you know, you'll, you'll get it. So like the men will come, the men will come out of the word works and just say like gross shit and you just gotta laugh it off. And you're yeah, just yeah. like, whatever, men will be men. Which is like, you know, it's a shitty thing that we have to just say that like men will be men like and just like kind of take the abuse from the comments yeah. and everything. But yeah. it's something that I, it's not going to change overnight. So maybe eventually, probably not. But that's just something that, you know, you just duck, you know, water off a duck's back. You just yeah. got to like let it roll. The women are the ones that I go after. If I get a message from a woman saying something about. You respond. Yes. The men, oh, the no. men I don't respond. The women are the ones that like get me to respond because if a woman comes after me and says something about like how I'm showing my body too much and like I thought that I was going to be a good role model for her kid, or, you know, like, and she starts like attacking me. I'm like, who are you to hate on another woman who is trying to spread body positivity to females who would look at someone like a stick model with anorexia and you want them to look, you want your kids to look at her instead of me? She's walking half naked on a runway, but because she's calling it a profession, it's all of a sudden okay. But because I'm trying to take my strong body and show positivity towards it and say, I'm, sh I'm strong, I'm beautiful, like I'm showing my hard work. You want to attack me on my integrity? Mm. How dare you like be a, you know, a mother to your own daughter and like what you just want her to cover up and you want her to like live this life where like she's scared to like show any kind of skin, any kind of confidence. And then you want to, wonder why there's so much abuse cases in women. They're not confident enough to stick up for themselves. They go throughout their whole life saying like, I need to cover up because men can't control themselves. I need to act this way because men can't do this. And then they get into a situation and they're like, well, I can't do anything because this man is going to do something. And they need to be raised with confidence so they can be like, they can tell guys to go like fuck themselves instead of getting into bad relationships, bad situations. It's one of those things where like when women start attacking me, especially women with children, that's when I'll respond and I'll, I'll debate all day long. The men I ignore. <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> it's pretty interesting. Like you're obviously like hitting, hitting a nerve there on like something you care a lot about. How much is that tied to like that pivotal moment when that relationship ended for you in college, you found CrossFit and then like you sort of became a whole new person? It was, the, it was a huge part because when I was in my when I was in my really bad relationship, the reason why I, w I got into the relationship and stayed in the relationship is because I didn't have self-confidence. I thought my self-worth was, you know, absolutely zero. I didn't have role models of strong women to look at and be like, she wouldn't deal with this. I didn't have the tools to be like, okay, well, this is what a relationship should look like. This is what I should be treated like. And I didn't have the confidence. And like, 
you know, I was in a situation where if someone said something about my body, I just believed it. I thought that I was worthless, that I didn't mean anything. And now, like, I dare someone to tell me that, like, I am worthless and, like, my body can't do amazing things. And so now I have the confidence and no one's going to tell me any differently. They've tried. They can't do it. But before, when I didn't have the confidence and I was, like, self-conscious about my body and I didn't know any better, and I, I got into a really bad relationship. I let a man abuse me because I didn't think I was worth more. <laughs> Is it weird talking about your body all the time? You know, it, yeah, it used to be. Yeah. And now it's kind of like, if you think about it, if you take a step back, it's kind of weird that, like, that's really what a lot of my conversations are around. But it's, it's kind of like what I'm building my brand on. So it's not, like, so weird. But it's weird in the fact that, like, you see it in the health and fitness space is so many people want to talk about how strong you are, about my body, about how, how does it feel being sexualized, like, how does it feel being so strong? And, you know, you're constantly talking about what the body can do. But, like... It's acceptable for people to come up and be like, wow, you must really work out. But, like, God forbid I go up to, like, an obese person and be like, wow, you should stop. <laughs> well, let's talk about that because I'd love to know the limits of your body positivity and acceptance because there's a branch of that community who basically just, in my view, accepts extraordinarily unhealthy images, lifestyles, behaviors which obviously is not a category that you fall under, not a category that you're trying to promote, but it's also within the same scope of people who are just accept everybody for what it is. Where, where does that limit exist for you? So I think that's a big, that's also like a big pain point for me. The whole body positivity movement, I, I want to just say I love. I think it's important, but I think we've almost gone too far in just saying like, it doesn't matter, love your body regardless. Yes, but if you are on a path to being a healthier version of yourself, awesome. Yep. If you love your body and all of your blood markers and your, you know, you don't have, you just don't have any underlying conditions, you don't have diabetes, your blood tests come back. Like if you're a healthy person, you should not care. If you are happy with your body and you are healthy, body positivity all the way. But the fact that we are almost getting to a point where we're like, it doesn't matter, be unhealthy, like do you, I think it's too far. If you are on a path and you're loving your body and saying like, I love my body now and I'm on a journey to being healthier, I think that is the best thing that we could be saying. Yep. Because it gives the story that no matter where you are, you can get healthier, but you should love yourself along the way. Like I think a lot of people are like, I hate myself now and so I wanna be a better version. And I think that's where the negativity comes in. Sure. And so many people judge the people who start and they're like, you know, they're just starting off. They don't know what to do in the gym. They don't know too much about nutrition. They're trying to learn and they get, you know, almost berated and they yeah. get like, you know, hateful comments. And like, that's where the negativity comes in, which is why this whole body positivity thing has been like, no, love your body regardless. Like, it doesn't matter. Love, 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 love. Yeah. And yes, but it almost like just swept under the rug the whole like, but you're on a journey to being healthier. And then people were like, well, I don't need to do the journey anymore. Yeah. And so th it's, it's a weird, it's a fine line. It's yeah. also hard to talk about, but like, cause I'm also like, a lot of people are like, well, girls who eat, like we should just eat. And I'm like, okay, I'm not saying like <laughs> girls who eat excessively. Like, <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying like girls who don't stop eating. Like yeah, it's yeah. like one of those things that was like, <laughs> it's like this weird line. But yeah, I like, I love the body positivity <laughs> movement, but I think some people like, they just, they use it as a little bit of like a cop out. And I just wish like if it was like more of like body positivity to a healthier journey, so. It's funny, I've actually gotten the, I've gotten like the positive side of body positivity people. Yeah. Where people ask me how long I'm gonna do strongman. I, well, it's not the healthiest to be at the weight I am. And they're like, no, but you're, you're a muscular, you're not that fat. And like, and it's like, no, 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 I'm 315 pounds. Like in the end, that's the story. Your heart is still going against that. What about the other side? So say down the track you had a daughter who's like, mom, you've inspired me to love my body. I'm gonna be a stripper. Teach their own? In a, in, a, in a way, I mean, obviously, like it's like one of those things where it's your own daughter. You're kind of like, oh, I mean, is there anything else we could do first? <laughs> okay, but you don't see that as a positive thing to do. I think it's, I, so it's such, it's, you know, it's like one of those, because I think, yeah. you know, I think the people who are in that line of work, I don't, you know, hate on them. Like they are doing, 
either they love it or they're doing it out of like need and necessity. Yep. Both things I value and I think, you know, I respect, I have to. Sure. It's not like one of these things where, you know, she's like my daughter comes up to me and she says like, that's what I want to do. I would try to be like, okay, we're not in like this desperate need. This isn't something you need to do. I'm sure there is a route we can take where, and it's not, it's not the fact that she would want to go and show off her body and be proud of her body. It's what she would experience within a strip club that I would want to protect her from. Okay. And if it was a thing where it was like, because again, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that like runway shows of women in lingerie are not essentially like they're, it's the same, it's the same thing it's except close, for yeah. they don't, you know, it's not advertised that they, you know, get to in the back of the room and they like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's the same thing. If a stripper just goes off and does her little pole dance and then she doesn't get touched, it's the same goddamn thing as a runway model walking in her lingerie thing. And I'm not going to pretend that even we've got movie stars out there walking the red carpet in see-through stuff. You can yeah, see yeah. everything. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, like, women taking hold of their own empowerment and saying, like, this is my body, I love it, be jealous. Like, work towards this. Like, I think I'm fucking hot. Look at me. It's fine. It's the fact of how the reactions of people what makes it toxic. So in the whole like stripping situation, if someone wants to go and show off their body because they've worked hard for it, hell yes. The thing that I would say is in those clubs, they're not respected. The men are in there like fucking gross. It's like objectifying. <laughs> and so um, it's one of those things where it's like, that's what I would want to protect my daughter from. But if, if she wants to do other things, like go show off your body as, as long as you're of age. I'm not going to have my 14 year old daughter out there, but like, you know, she comes at me like Let's, 18 and if we you know. take it, okay, not strictly say OnlyFans. Okay. If she wants to do an OnlyFans, put up nude pictures, whatever. Again, it's like different when it's your daughter. Cause it's almost like one of those things. Like, again, I know what you can get on the internet. Uh -huh. It's again, not this thing where it's like, if that's what you want to do and like, you can go and make like all this money. Like let's like, <laughs> We're going to just talk about, one, the amount of money that some of these OnlyFans people are making. Like, no, they're making... I'm just, I'm just it's trying a, to... Because I think what... what people don't I do understand. not see a problem with women showing off their body. If they are proud of their body, it does not... Like, that does not phase me. It is the reactions that they get and the object... And, like, just being objectified right, in the way... Right. Like, that's what I have a problem with. And if it was, like, this whole healthy thing, like... I'm just... So, I was just in Hawaii and stumbled upon a nude beach uh -huh. and the people over there it was like it wasn't sexual at all they were just like that's what they were doing they were doing yoga they were like it's just not a sexual thing they're doing it, yoga nude but like that's... see in that in that space it wasn't like Hold on. <laughs> yeah, i'll give you the location <laughs> but what <laughs> i'm but what i'm saying is it was like you get around a culture like that and it's not about this sexualness it's about just being like open and free and it's like it doesn't fucking matter like there are people just like naked everywhere and no one was like no one had their phones out no one was being creepy no one was like this is weird this is weird and it's our reactions to nudity and to like the human body that has made this such a toxic topic tell me the real story you stumbled upon a nude beach yeah no no, no. so we were looking for Jet black sands beach like in hawaii and there were like lots of them and you know like you look at like yelp reviews and it was like Oh, well, like, this one's, like, super, like, packed and busy. You know, this one's, like, blah, 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 blah. Yep. And this one was, like, there were bad reviews because they were, like, well, like, you had to walk down this whole entire cliff to get to. Like, it's, like, so hard to get to. And I was, like, awesome. that means that's going to not be packed. Yep. I'm going there. You know, we, like, walk, you know, like, you're walking down. You, like, hop on the black sand. And then you're, like, you take, like, a look around. You're, like, oh, it's this kind of party. <laughs> but, like, again. You got there. What'd you do? I fucking sat down and hung with the people. You took the kid off? Hell and... yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> hate tan lines, so I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> wow. But again, it was like one of those things where like it's not even, like people don't even was blink it out. pictures that came out last week, were they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard, you ever heard of the people who will tan, this, sorry, the naked yoga men, I think it is. <laughs> There's like this theory where if you get sun onto your butthole, that it's good for your You health. absorb vitamin T, like vitamin D, like this much more. It's like, it's like, it's like two minutes. <laughs> you just like tan your butthole for like two minutes and you get like the amount of vitamin D you need for like a week or something like that. You're sounding like it you're buying into this. Hell yeah, I'm buying into it. <laughs> I, I, genuinely. Downward dog. <laughs> have, you, have you done that? No, I haven't, but like I've read that through. <laughs> <laughs>
We're that close. I went, I, I went to and enjoyed the nude beach, but I was not someone who was just doing downward dog. Like. <laughs> and along the lines of body positivity and a body body and whatever, I had a lady at a, a bar two nights ago. I walked in to order a drink. She was clearly off it. And she goes like, how much you bench? And like, do you see if, because in my mind immediately, I went to, if I did that same thing to you, would I get in trouble? This lady. Yes. And you're like, huh. Yeah. Where, where do you stand on, on that? So a body is no. just a body. Man, woman, woman, body. Do you see them any different? I mean, no. I mean, no. It's like, one, but the, I feel like the intrusion of like personal boundaries is like what it is. It's like a body is a body. Let people be, like be them. And if you want to ask a question, like that's fine. But the moment that you start getting into someone's space and start touching them, that's not okay. Like, and again, it's the whole thing that I'm talking about. Is like it's the human reaction to this they can't it's like you can't even control yourself women are coming up i've had men come up and like touch my shoulders and stuff and it's like that is just inappropriate i don't care if you're saying like wow you've got big arms do not touch me because again like i said earlier if i went up to like someone and just like jiggled their love handles and was like what do we eat every <laughs> day <laughs> yeah i would get canceled my instagram account would be canceled in a heartbeat but I have people coming up to me constantly touching my body, asking yeah. me like how much I squat. I get cat called out of the car being like, look at those legs. And it's like, like some of them are nice. Some of them, like when you touch me, that's not okay. Some of them are just like purely objectifying. And it's like, I want to have like, you know, this confidence and like show off my body and be like, look at this strong body. Look what I can do. Like, this is what you should strive for. Not the like anorexic type. Like I want that, but it makes it hard sometimes when like, you know, years ago, I was just, I went to go get coffee. I was in Orlando, I was riding my bike, and I came out of a coffee shop and was like, just doing the whole thing of like putting my coffee on my thing, like putting my bag on, and like riding my bike. And that video got put on Pornhub. What? Yeah. Of you just putting coffee? Of me just putting coffee in my little thing and riding a bike. Like getting on, I had like, I had like this outfit on, like, you know, gym shorts and everything. And that video got put on Pornhub. How'd you find out about that? A guy literally was like, look at, like, he, he literally prefaced it. He goes, look, I'm a guy. <laughs> we all know why I was here, but I stumbled across this video, and I thought you'd like to know that this is on the internet. And he just sent me the link, and I was like, wow. god damn, it's like a five-minute video of me, like, riding a bike. And the comments, and, like, it was just, it was disgusting. And it's like, women can't even ride a bike and get coffee without being sexualized. Again, it's not what I'm wearing. It's not how I'm acting. It's not what I'm doing. It is the human reaction. Some male decided that he could videotape me and go put it on the internet. I have worked hard on my body. I want women to look at my body and be like, I want that. Yeah. I want that. Like I want the, that positive stuff. Yeah. But because there is such a negative thing with like nudity and guys being like, oh, she's so hot, like, but like all this kind of stuff, then it makes it look like, you know, like the thirst trap thing. And it's like, no, I just like, I have a good body. I'm going to show it off. Like, it's, it's not me. But then, you know, because of the reactions of people, yeah. all of a sudden it's my fault yeah. that like it's overly sexualized. It's my fault that men want to say these gross things. It's my fault that I'm making money off my body. You guys are going to sexualize me anyway. Might as well make it buck. Buck off. <laughs> like, it gets to sort of the next point, which uh, this year, before semis, you went to Dubai straight before. Yeah, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. You went there just before semis. We know how semis went. There's a reasonable argument to say your shift is, your focus is shifting away from being the best CrossFit athlete you could be to being the best uh, personal brand you can be to making the biggest impact you can make. Uh, where would you say you're at in that journey between like CrossFit and shifting to the next thing? I definitely like have been trying to shift towards bigger than CrossFit for a while. I think the Saudi Arabia trip right before semifinals was a bummer kind of thing. Like I, I was sick. Like you know, you, it's the same old excuses. Like everyone loves to like if they don't. They don't make it to the games. Yeah, yeah. They got the whole thing like, oh, I was sick. I was injured. It's like, fuck off. We just didn't make it. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah. Um, so I don't, 
I can't say if it would have gone any differently. I think, like, maybe. I mean, two points is two points. Like, I think maybe if I was feeling better, I could have done better in a little bit of an event. And like, That's all it was, two points. Two points. Wow. Um, so it's like one of those things where it's like, sure, there is an argument that could be made that if I hadn't gone on that trip, like, maybe I would have made it. But I also think the programming just, like, it was weird, I think, this year. It wasn't in my favor with, like, some things. Like, there were things I was really good at and things that, like, I just was, like, it just not. It was just, like, weighted muscle-ups, never going to be a good thing. They gave me strength event with, like, running, and it was, like, it doesn't matter how much I snatch if, you know, you get, like, bottom half in, like, an 800-meter sprint. Like, there's only so much I can do in that sense. So it's, like, I don't know the outcome regardless. I'm glad I went to Saudi Arabia. As you said, like, sure, it's weird to have a women's panel in Saudi Arabia, but they're trying to be more progressive over there. Mm. And if I can be a face to help bring body positivity and allow women the freedom that they deserve over there, I'm going to fucking do that. That's my priority. And like when I had that, when I got approached for that, I was like, that's what I want. I want to be over there. And like, I talked to the government and was like, this whole like men and women's gyms, that has to go. Mm. Like if you want to have CrossFit competitions and you want, you know, CrossFitters to come over, like you can't have these rules where like men and women who aren't married can't stay in the same hotel room. Yeah. Like you have to get rid of that. And so I got to sit down with some really influential people and have these conversations and it was great. And I do think that they are really striving for change. And that's awesome to see. And I want to be a part of that. If they start having competitions over there, like I want to go out and like, you know, talk to women about their bodies and how amazing it is. Yeah. Like I want to be, I want to be in the face of that. I want to go and create change in a place that desperately needs it and over like I was that was something I was willing to risk yeah. and so I think it's important and as to answer your question is I'll compete for as long as my body says like sure and as long as my mind says like I like competing I'll go for as long as I can but this isn't like something that has deterred me I'll come back next year like my goal will be to go and compete at games I love competing I love going to the CrossFit games yeah. But I'm not going to pretend like this time off hasn't allowed me to really extend and build. Um, yes. That's right. No, I got you. I'm, I'm going to do something. It's a <laughs> visual demonstration here. Um, so I'm not going to pretend like this time off hasn't allowed me to build like more of my brand, have bigger opportunities in like different spaces. Like we were talking like uh, next month, I'm going to go walk in Miami Fashion Week for their bikini line. Like. It just, you know, things that I wouldn't get to go do if I was training for the CrossFit Games. Yeah. So this is an opportunity all on its own. So it's a healthy balance. So this blueberry uh -huh. is CrossFit athlete. Yeah. This pers uh, this blueberry uh -huh. is online personality. Uh -huh. Where do you want to exist in there right now? Right now. I mean, right now I'm still in the middle okay. because I think... I've built my whole brand, my whole thing off of like this strong woman in CrossFit. And I still want to compete. I still love competing. I still love CrossFit. You'd be a hell of a strong woman, by the way. <laughs> oh my God. I, I wouldn't because like I, I like, I get bored with like his, the strength <laughs> stuff that you have to do. One is so, I don't think people really realize the, what it takes out of you to do some of the strength stuff that you do. Mm. And the sets of like strength how much it hurts. That sucks. It's hard. What you do is hard. I At least I get to run around and like play on some gymnastic stuff and like, wee, like you have to like, you are tearing apart your body constantly. I would say, I think in the CrossFit and Strongman world, if you have 10, ask 10 Strongmen, who's more impressive, and you ask 10 CrossFitters who's more impressive, we would all say the other people. It's just yeah. such an appreciation for exactly the thing we don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, a lot of people are like, you're so strong, like, why wouldn't you want to do that? It's all strength stuff. And it's like, okay, I'm naturally strong. So a lot of these things, like, in the CrossFit space just come naturally to me. And I do, like, regular strength cycles. But the strength cycles you do and the amount of strength work you put in is, like, it. I know what it, like, I, I just go to, like, a bodybuilding gym and like these hard sets of like leg presses, like that, it hurts. It, does hurt. it hurts your feelings. Like yeah. I, Yeah, you're. So and then you don't get to like go and be like, oh, I'm just gonna go do some like bar muscle ups and like play around and everything. Like, no, you gotta sit there and do eight sets 
six by six. It, like, it's just, so I digress. But anyway, back to your blueberries. Yes. Um, I, you know. I, Abbott, by the way, you've, you've left your whole bowl there. I've, learned, I've been enjoying our conversation. <laughs> this is a big deal that I was more invested in this than my food. I know. Take the compliment. Girls who chat. <laughs> Girls who chat. <laughs> um, I still love competing in CrossFit. And so right now, I'd say I'm like in the middle. I'm still focused on like, I want to go and compete in the CrossFit Games next year. I'll get back into training. I want to go to Rogue again. I'll compete at Wadapalooza. I'm hoping to go to the Down Under Championship and just have fun and compete on a team. Cool in November. I want to do all this while also building a brand and something, you know, bigger outside of CrossFit. Yeah. I think in the next coming years, there will be a bigger shift where it'll be like, I'm really leaning to this side and CrossFit becomes, you know, kind of like a, a past thing. Like maybe I go team, you know, things like that. Like I might do like another thing or I might just like straight up walk away. I'm not going to pretend like this is like, it's like an easy sport and like there's other things that I want to do and you can't do them while still like trying to compete at the level that like we compete in. At least like I, I couldn't like there I like, I, I give it to the people who can have like full time families yeah. or other jobs yeah. and still compete in this. I just don't want to, I just, I can't, like, I can't live that hectic of a life. Like I got to pick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, but the shift is coming eventually, but yeah. for right now, I'm pretty, like, in the middle. Cool. Well, I think love you or, or, or hate you, people have to see <clears throat> that the prospects for you after you're done being an athlete is so much better than most people. And I think a lot of athletes, whether it's strongman or CrossFit, those of us in fringe sports where we're not on, like, multi-million dollar a year contracts, should take a page out of the book and like i'm trying to do the same thing like something much the same every single pro strongman and crossfitter and um fringe sports should all be petrified of the day that they can't rely on competition income anymore can't rely on sponsor income anymore um so i think uh, a lot of value there and i think we could chat for a really long time really long time uh, but let's but call it it's there. time to we call it part maybe one. go do some fitness you i gotta, gotta eat into that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, girls, so we gotta watch. Yeah. It. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Always. I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Let's have you be kind, and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>